Okay. Because you said you want you were going to explain a little bit about Parkinson's. Let's mm -hmm. let's go with that. Um, so yeah. could you tell us a bit more about Parkinson's apart from it just being the second most common neurodegenerative disease? Yeah, of course. So uh, as Pollyanna said, it affects part of the brain called the basal ganglia. I won't go into the tens of sections within the basal ganglia, but I'll give you one area within the basal ganglia called the substantia nigra that it affects. And it affects these dopamine producing neurons. Now, dopamine is a neurotransmitter. And a neurotransmitter is basically how the brain talks to each other. And in this case, with, with those loss of dopamine cells, it causes a loss of movement uh, in the long run. And because it's degenerative, that means that it gets worse and worse and worse over time. So your movement will get continue to get worse and worse with this buildup, with this loss of neurons um, and this buildup of something called alpha-synuclein. Uh, and what's alpha-synuclein? It's basically these little protein aggregates. And when I say an aggregate, ag aggregate basically, it's just a mass that is insoluble. It doesn't go away. It attaches to the cells and it doesn't leave and it causes problems because specifically for this substantia nigra area that I said, it causes this loss of dopamine cells, but it spreads throughout the brain. But this area, substantia nigra or basal ganglia, is particularly susceptible to the alpha synuclein. So that's maybe the, the biology behind it. Um, do you have any questions about the biology, Pollyanna? I could move on to the clinical uh, or the how it presents a little bit more. My question is, is there anyone famous that has Parkinson's disease? Yes, yes. Um, yes there's, I think it is relatively common. Um, and you've got Michael J. Fox, who had quite, he was very young. He was 29 when he was diagnosed. So it's quite uh, relatively rare to get it that young. Usually it affects people over the age of 55. So Ozzy Osbourne uh, has it as well at the moment. Um, yeah, he does. Yeah, so there's um, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, it affects everyone. I'm pretty sure Muhammad Ali had it, right? That's what he had. Yeah, absolutely, Muhammad yeah. Ali. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was yes. that was really interesting because I can talk onto that a little bit more. But uh, there was questions um, if Muhammad Ali had it because uh, it seems to be an increased amount of boxers and fighters uh, seem to have uh, Parkinson's disease and are wondering if it's some insults to or brain injury that causes the Parkinson's disease. I think Michael Parkinson of the TV show from years ago was also diagnosed that now you've prompted a thought. Yeah. Thought. Yeah. But no, it wasn't. Aware. I think I maybe did see that Ozzy Osbourne had it, which is... Mm. I and mean, you mentioned there that Michael J. Fox was super young, 29. When, yeah. when might you start seeing it? Like more gen, like what is the average? Average, um, or probably it gets more common as you get older. So you will see it. The older the people are, the more likely they are to have it. I believe um, people over the age of sixty-five, one in one hundred people, will have Parkinson's disease. I believe it goes to five, um, five in every hundred or one in every twenty by the time you reach eighty or eighty-five. So it continuously increases. Um, yeah, with some scary figures, uh, for example, um, they're expecting in the next 30 years that one in 37 people will will be diagnosed with Parkinson's disease as we've got an ageing population. Yeah, it's a high figure. So pe I'll put it this way. People who are alive today, there is a one in 37 chance that they will get Parkinson's disease. Um, so it's it's coming in hot and fast. Uh, so it's important why we research it. <laughs> So is that purely because of just the population aging or is that also for other environmental reasons? Just the population aging. Yeah. So it's because we've got an aging population. It's nothing to be, that sounds scary. It's, be, it's, 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 it's not a good thing, but it's the fact that, you know, we are living longer, you know, cancers are being cured. Um, and the next one you know, that's going to be coming in is neurodegenerative diseases uh, because of that, 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 that is the population it affects is the it's older people, so it's really important that we come up with treatments and possibly cures. I think the um, ones I mean you mentioned it earlier. Um and I think when I've seen people, for example, on social media are like raising money, they're running a marathon, um, they've got someone very oh. close to them that's possibly been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. But then they are then, if you'd like to help, you know, donate, I'm raising money for Alzheimer's UK. 
or the Alzheimer's Society, mm. I can't remember the name. And I'm just wondering, is there a difference yeah. between Parkinson's and Alzheimer's or are they intertwined? Or I think you get a lot of, yeah. there's a bit of people kind of, I don't know whether it's confusion or it's, are they the same? You no, know, that's a really good question. They're, they're not the same. Um, Alzheimer's disease is a dementia. So it affects your memory. But you, well, the most, the most, so Alzheimer's is the most common that affects your memory. Um, other versions of dementias are something like Pick's disease that um, affects your frontal temporal lobe and gives you personality changes, but it's still a form of dementia. Um, you've got things like Broca's aphasia, which I believe Bruce Willis has, uh, where you start to not be unable to speak. Um, it's just a different type of, uh, of I guess, uh, loss of cells. Um, but no, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease are different. But that doesn't... So when you have Parkinson's disease, uh, there's also a bit of an increase of possibly getting dementia but specifically Alzheimer's delight, delight dementia, so cognitive decline, um, which I think possibly for some people, when I've been talking to people, that is the scariest thing. The movement is is really unpleasant, but losing your movement and then also having dementia is almost like a double whammy. So I think for a lot of people who are viewing it, the movement maybe is is bad, but then on top of that, the family members are seeing them losing themselves almost. So it's possible that people think, okay, I want to help with the Alzheimer's um, and also help with the Parkinson's, but there can be some crossover. Absolutely, yeah. How sense. common is the crossover in this, oh, well, I guess, in that sense? Oh, oh um, I don't know, specifically Alzheimer's disease and um, and Parkinson's disease, um, but within Parkinson's disease, I believe it's, it's higher than... Um, it's it's higher. I can't remember the exact numbers. That might come back to me later on in the podcast. But it's it's definitely higher. Um, so, for example, I'm doing a study looking at cognitive decline. Yeah. And so you can't. Um, I think my next question was really just going to be. You know, you mentioned there's cures for cancer. Mm -hmm. Is there a cure for Parkinson's disease? Then there's not. No. Uh, currently there's, there's nothing that stops it there's um i mean this past year there's been some very early uh, clinical trials um it's called ub312 and it's a vaccine which is meant to basically cause an immune response so almost similar you know but in the brain but imagine um if you have a cold for example uh you know you're unwell your body creates that immune response to kind of kill and get rid of that cold and create antibodies and antibodies are the thing that comes and fights and get, gets rid of that um, virus or whatever it may, may be. But in um, the brain, if they're hoping with this vaccine, that it will um, fight these uh, ACE nuclein aggregates or little clumps of proteins that I spoke about before that spread throughout the brain and uh, cause problems in the basal ganglia. It's very early, so they're, they're still kind of working on it, but it's quite, it's, it's probably, the, it's, it's on its way to hopefully helping. I